Now the Cardinals go to the bullpen, a Mr. Oil Change Express pitching change and the double-A debut. <laughs> of the left-hander Patrick Dayton. Dayton out of San Diego, California. He relieves Austin Gomber, who tossed a scoreless inning of relief. Faced the minimum three batters, helped himself out with a pickoff. That was all in the fourth inning. So Dayton gets going and buzzes the left-handed bat in Calabuig with his first pitch tonight. Patrick Dayton, number 32 on his back. 24 years old. And uh, just up from high A Palm Beach, Cardinals added a couple of right-handers to Michael Baird and Kyle Leahy to the bullpen from Palm Beach as this is down and in, ball number two. Dayton in high A ball this year went 42 appearances, three and two with a 3.64 earned run average. 59 to the third innings of work, 60 hits, or rather 60 strikeouts, 58 hits. Big rip and a miss by Calabuig here. Two balls and a strike for him. Only 17 walks allowed by Dayton, the southpaw. And for the first time in a Springfield uniform. Works from the far third base side of the rubber. Hand set at the belt buckle. 2-1 breaking ball. Misses a little bit high, perhaps. Good hitters count for Calabuig at three balls and a strike. Rockhounds with the only run of the ball game so far back in the second inning. Three and one. Zipped in there. Strike number two. A good fastball by Dayton. How about Henderson Hurtado, the 23-year-old, making his double-A debut on the Midland side. Coming up from low A Beloit and spinning four scoreless innings in his first Texas League ball game. Here's ball four down and in. Calabuig with the leadoff walk. And the Rockhounds get a man on here to open up this fifth inning. So there's a man on, nobody down. Brian Perez will come back up. The pitching change, of course, brought to you by Mr. Oil Change Express. When it's time to change your vehicle's oil, they've got your bases covered. Every oil change includes a $10 wash credit and a multi-point inspection with no appointment needed. You can visit any of the three area locations of Mr. Oil Change Express to learn more today. Here's a push bunt, first base side, Dayton Fields throws to first base, not in time. Punt single for Brian Perez. And the Rock Counts have two men on it. Now Dayton fielded that ball on the right side of the infield, and I think they're going to check whether the runner Perez stayed in the baseline or not. Joe Cruz allowed to talk to Luis Hernandez, the home plate umpire. Dayton fielded that ball, spun around, and he had a momentary hesitation on it at that point because the angle to throw to first base was kind of taken away by Perez swooping a little bit to the inside portion. But the umpires confer and decide that everything was up to snuff. So a walk and a bunt single open up this fifth inning. Dayton digging in here against Nate Mondu. Mondu, the left-handed batter, bunts this back behind home plate. Strike one. Rock Count's not normally a bunting team, at least historically. Affiliated with the Oakland Athletics, that, that typically is not a tremendous priority placed through their organization. They're more of a get on base and kind of go station to station, wait for that big hit sort of strategy. As the 0-1 is bounced to first base, stopped by Chinea, quick throw to second for a one. Ascanio will hang on to it from there. So the fielder's choice, three to six. 
Down to third base goes Calabuig. Out at second base, Perez. On at first base, Mondu. Two men on with one down. Dayton will turn his attention to Taylor Motter, the right-handed batting shortstop. That was a good play by Chinea. Very calm. So many times you see a guy rush that throw. Looked like it took kind of a late bounce on him, too. He sort of had to jump up with it to avoid that ball getting too high to field. And a good choice by Escanio to not try to force a return throw there. This is dribbled softly foul off the foot of Motter. So strike number one for him. That's another thing you see a lot. The shortstop in that equation getting the out at second base and trying to fire one back to first. Air mailing it into the dugout. <laughs> you hope not to see it often. You hope not to. Not forcing anything though. Sometimes Discretion is the better part of valor. Mm -hmm. 0 1 is ripped down the left field line. That's going to bring a run in from third base. An RBI double for Mater. A round of third trotting in is Mondu. Calabuig home on the play. And the Rockhounds add a run here in the fifth inning, 2 to nothing. Oh, that just was a rocket by Mater. Pulled down that left field foul line. So they're at second and third base. One down and Jonah Heim will come up batting from the right handed side. Switch hitting catcher had been kept 0 for 1 by Rondone. Cardinals have the infield halfway in. Dayton's first one to Heim is outside, ball one. Eight o'clock on the button here in downtown Springfield. Top of the fifth inning, two to nothing Rockhound lead. Tulsa Drillers have clinched the second half title in the North Division today. As a fastball gets that strike call. One and one right on the outer edge. So we know that the Travelers will be hosting the Drillers in Little Rock on Wednesday and Thursday as the North Division Championship Series gets going down there at Dickey Stevens Park. Tulsa will host game three on Friday of this coming week. There's a breaking pitch down and outside. Two and one, actually a fastball. A two and one regardless. The end games four and five if necessary will also stay at One Oak Field Saturday and Sunday of next weekend. Down south, we know the teams are going to be Amarillo and Midland. 2-1 breaking ball, a chopper to third off the lunging try of Robertson. That should be a base hit to left field. It's going to bring in one. The throw home is not in time. Scoring from second is Motter. A two-run single in all likelihood for Jonah Heim. It is indeed a base hit with two RBIs for Heim on a chopper to that 6-5 hole. Time to react just out of his outstretched attempt. So the Rockhounds have quadrupled the advantage. Three runs here in the top of the fifth inning. They've opened it up to four to nothing. Patrick Dayton in his double-A debut trying to settle things down here against the left-handed batter, Dan Gamash. Chinea holds on the runner at first pace and a first pitch fastball. Placed well for strike one. Midland and Amarillo started the day tied for first in the South Division second half. 0-1 breaking ball, swing and a miss, nothing in two. Amarillo won the first half, so they locked up their playoff spot back in June. Midland clinched it with the win on Friday. And nailing down the uh, wild card spot if they don't end up winning the second half. Here's a pitch outside off speeder by Dayton. One and two. 
But you know the Rockhounds would love to try to win the second half, get that potential game five back uh, to keep at their ballpark, Security Bank ballpark, instead of returning to Amarillo. Swing and a miss here, strike three. Gamash over the top of that bending breaking ball by Dayton. Good pitch by Patrick for his first double A strikeout. There are two down for the right handed batting, Jonah Bride. Bride set up on the right side. And this pops out of the glove of Julio Rodriguez down to second base. Goes Heim. That'll be a pass ball. One and no count for Bride. Swing and a pop fly. Right center field. Johan finding it in this Sunday night sky. And Mieses pulls it in for the final piece of the top of the fifth inning. Rock counts, though, open it up a bit with a three spot. They lead it four to nothing through four and a half on the Missouri Department of Conservation Cardinals Broadcast Network. Chase Calabui for the Midland Rockhounds. Four runs on seven hits, no errors for Midland. They have stranded six in the game. The Cardinals, no runs on just two hits, belonging both to Chris Chinea. No errors, and the Cardinals have left four on in the game as Patrick Dayton delivers a strike. Lefty lefty situation here. Dayton starting that ball at the back pocket of the hitter. Dykeman and it broke right over the inside corner. The 0 1 pitch. Again, back to a breaking ball and again firing it in there for strike two. Kind of a tough first inning for Patrick Dayton, but a leadoff walk. Those spell trouble more times than not. The 0 2 pitch is right on a line into the glove of Chinea, who had Dykeman positioned perfectly. Almost. Directly on that chalk line, hard hit liner, but Chinea on the receiving end for a line drive three put out. And here comes Mickey McDonald. And the pitch, this is screamed foul down the right field line and out of play. Yeah, tomorrow that'll be a good one. 115 in St. Louis. The Giants and the Cardinals, two of the best organizations in all of Major League Baseball. Highly respected. Here's a high pop-up right side, pushing out the second baseman, Lopez, and he makes a nice catch. Into right field, back to the infield, right along the chalk line, and Irving Lopez made it look easy. Spectacular play by Irving. Two outs. Tyler Beatty will go against Adam Wainwright in that ball game tomorrow. Wayno nine and nine, Beatty three and eight, and as we said, it'll be the final visit to Bush Stadium for Bruce Bochi. I was in Bruce Bochi's office in the visiting Bush Stadium uh, clubhouse one time, and he goes, looked at my press credential, and he goes, Nate. What the hell do you do, son? I was terrified, you could imagine. I think I was 18 years old, if that. Dayton's 0-1 pitch. On the outside corner, a strike. It's 0-2. Bochy is as old school as you'll find. Very even keel, rarely going to get flustered. And frankly, he's a dying breed in this game with all the different managerial changes we see these days. Here's a ground ball to short. Raider Escanio picks it up off the deck. Peanuts and Cracker Jacks. Ice cold Coca-Cola, maybe a Budweiser on this Sunday evening. 
And uh, Patrick Dayton is back to work and his first pitch to uh, Brian Perez is a bit high. And it's 1-0 on Brian, 4-0 Midland. Always fun to look out amongst the crowd and see the different jerseys. This is outside. I see a young man sporting an Albert Pujols Cardinals jersey back. Aledmiz Diaz, Ozzy Smith, Miles Michaelis, Bruce Suter, Bob Gibson, Yadier Molina. The 2-0 on the inside corner, a strike. 2-1. Stan Musial, Matt Carpenter, here is a 2-1, and it's hit through the left side and into left for the Rockhounds eighth base hit of the game. And the more and more I see Midland, the more I wonder if they're going to be able to Push out the poodles. <laughs> and here comes Nate Mondu, second baseman for the Hounds. <laughs> and the pitch from uh, the left hander is on the ground is short. Going to second for one, no turn. Ascanio getting it to Lopez in time and Raider putting that ball right on the numbers of Irving Lopez, who had no chance to fire it over to first base and try to get Mondu for the double play, but they do get the lead runner, a 6-4 fielder's choice. Wipes out the leadoff single. And it takes some speed off the base with Brian Perez retired. And now it's Taylor Motter. High navy blue socks for Motter. White batting gloves holds it down on the knob. And the pitch from Patrick Dayton is a strike. Dayton gets the one he wants from Rodriguez. Set at the belt. Looks at first. Chenea holds the runner on and the pitch home. It is a strike. Bottom of the zone. Hitter thinking it was low. Turns around and has a chat with Luis Hernandez. Motter waves the bat back at the left-hander. Dayton, who twists the ball, gets the grip, has the one he wants, and the 0-2 pitch headed home. Swinging a foul. Karam's right off the top ledge of the folks sitting in the nice seats right in the first row. That's got to be a good view down there. I'll tell you what's been a big hit. Cardinals implementing the free shuttle service. Folks parking over at OTC. And that shuttle service has run like a well-oiled machine in its uh, week of operation. Cardinals implementing that after the parking across the street was raised out of their control. This is down and in for a ball. And by all accounts, the number of folks utilizing the free shuttle service has gone up every single night of operation. Can't beat free. Here's the one-two pitch outside. And the fine folks at OTC just giving up their lot. Very nice gesture. Big crowd on hand here at Hammonds Field. One out, Dayton throws to first. Nothing happening over there with Mondu retreating to the bag. Batter is Taylor Motter. Spells his last name M-O-T-T-E-R. An RBI double back in the fifth inning. He's also struck out twice. The 2-2, runner goes, swinging a pop-up down the right field line. This ball is trouble, and it is just foul. That would have landed in front of Miesis and behind Chinea. No man's land. The Cardinals had a slight shift on the right-handed batter with Miesis more towards the gap in right center field. And the broken bat will force Motter to get a new piece of lumber. 
And Patrick Dayton can take a sigh of relief as that ball, he was blowing it to go foul, and it did just barely land foul. A very calm evening here at Hammonds Field. I will doubt that that will be the case tomorrow. Usually those day games, the wind is whipping. Here's a pitch low, runner goes, throw to second base, and goodbye. Holy smokes, he was out by a mile. Mondu didn't even try to slide. Lopez on the receiving end, caught stealing, two to four. I wonder if that was a missed signal or something by Motter. Runner going on a 2-2 pitch that was low, and he runs into an out at second base. The 3-2, ground ball rolled over to the short. What a play, Escanio deep in the hole, long throw, he got him! What a play by Raider Escanio! Put a star on it. Time to stretch at Hammonds Field. To work. This is inning number four for Dayton out of the bullpen, making his double-A debut here this evening. And he has really settled into this outing after the uh, Rockhounds welcomed him to the ballgame with three runs in the top of the fifth inning. Dayton has not allowed another one. Misses outside, ball number one to Jonah Heim. Switch batting catcher hitting in the right-handed side. Heim collected the two-run single in that fifth inning, which expanded a one-to-nothing advantage for Midland into a four-to-nothing lead, and he jolts this one deep down the right field line, tailing foul. A near miss for Heim, nearly a double down into the right field corner. And instead, it goes to one and one. Cody Stoll, the left-hander, warming up in the bullpen for Midland. That's not right. That's number 25, I thought. Maybe not. Hmm. Still might be Cody Stoll. Here's a foul ball out of play. <clears throat> and the count one and two. Stoll listed as number 15, but he is left-handed. There are not many left-handed options out of the bullpen, so let's go with Cody Stoll. Time's up to 34 runs batted in this year with the two on the single in the fifth inning. Takes a look at a breaking ball down and in, two and two. You know, getting names right is overrated. Yeah, Julio, Chinea. Well, and, and I'm questioning myself. Here's a sharp grounder to first base. It is Chinea that fields and takes it over to first himself. Three and assisted. That was a good pick by Chris doing everything here in this series. But I had a moment of outrage last night hmm. about a number mishap, but it was me, or I, I suppose, that was misreading it. So who knows? That's the worst, when you can't blame somebody else. I know. It's not the way it's supposed to go? No. Dan Gamash is the batter. And he puts it on the ground to first base, under the try of Chinea, backed up by Lopez. He throws to Dayton covering. They get Gamash on a 3-4-1 put out. Chenea got just a piece, I believe, going at it with a backhanded try. Lopez cutting from second. Back it up the first baseman, Chenea. Irving able to field it and hit Dayton in stride, hustling over from the mound. Well, that was just a good play by the Cardinals infield. So a pair of ground outs. Two down, Jonah Bride the batter. Right-handed swinging third baseman. This pitch inside, bending off that inside corner. Ball number one. But Cody Stoll, if that is indeed Cody Stoll down there in the bullpen, he was throwing from the bullpen mound like you would normally expect to see. Swing and a miss here. It's one and one. Then he left the mound. Did you see that? He was playing 
catch with the catcher on the full length of the bullpen from behind the mound. The catcher was standing at the far end of the bullpen on the other side. Hmm. They threw the ball back and forth a couple of times and Stull just got back on the mound and has resumed warming up in a normal manner as a ground ball foul down the third base side. It's one and two for Jonah Bride. A pretty interesting he, he kind of broke up pitching off the bullpen mound with almost playing catch long toss yeah, like an abbreviated long toss very strange whatever works though Cody Stoll's been around a long time he knows how to warm up always interesting those relievers starters as well for that matter have their own specific routines that work for them one two from Dayton it's a change down and outside taken for ball number two Cardinals are trailing this one four to nothing. Rock counts at four eight no. Cardinals are at zero oh, three and zero. Oh. Two two delivery swing and a fly ball carrying out to Mieses in right field and right into his mid it goes for a final out in the top of the eighth inning. More good work by the southpaw Patrick Dayton in his double A debut. A one two three eighth frame for the left hander.